In this video, we're going to be discussing how to convert fractions into decimals. I think the most important thing to understand with this lesson is that a fraction bar is simply another way of expressing division, meaning anytime you see a fraction, that's really just a division problem that is asking you to take the numerator, meaning the top of the fraction, divided by the denominator, the bottom of the fraction. So, for example, if we see that we have 3 fifths here, as a fraction. When you see 3 over 5 as a fraction, that literally is just meaning you need to take 3 divided by 5. That is truly what it's asking here. Any fraction you have is simply a division problem just being expressed a little differently than what you might be used to. So if you have a calculator, that kind of is all the lesson that you need because you can just type in 3 divided by 5 to your calculator and the decimal you get would be your answer. If we wanted to do this by hand, that would take a little bit more time, but we can walk through that together. So if we want to do this by hand, then we would need to do this division problem uh, using long division. Remember the way that works is that the 3 would go inside that box. The 5 that we are dividing by should be going outside. And so usually what we do here is we start off by trying to figure out how many groups of 5 we can pull out from the number inside the box. Well, in this case, that causes us an issue because we can't pull any groups of 5 out of 3, right? 3 is too small. And so what we do instead then is we bring in a decimal point and a 0. Now, we do need to make sure that decimal point is also carried above the line to be part of our answer as well. But what that allows us to do now is instead of looking at this as a 3, we can look at this as a 30. Now we can ask ourselves how many groups of 5 can we pull out of 30? What is 30 divided by 5? Well, we know that we can pull 6 groups of 5 out of 30. So we put a 6 up here. And since that comes out perfectly, we don't have anything left that we need to deal with, and so 0.6, or in other words, 0 0.6, is a decimal version of the fraction 3 fifths. 3 fifths converts to 0 0.6. Let's look at another example where we have a fraction that may not convert quite as simply as the last one did. I'm not saying this is going to be extremely difficult or anything, just you know, take a extra, a little bit of extra work compared to the last one. We've got a fraction of one-fourth. Again, that fraction bar represents division, so that means we are doing one divided by four. So if we want to do that by hand, we need to set that up in long division, meaning we'd have one divided by four like this, the one inside the box, the four outside the box. And so just like the last example, we'd want to start by looking to see how many groups of four we can pull out. And again, just like last time, we can't do that. We can't pull any groups of four out of one because one is already less than four. So instead, what we have to do is we need to bring in a decimal point and bring in a zero in the tenths spot. We can also go ahead and bring that uh, decimal up. And if you wanted to, you could even go ahead and add in that zero before the decimal point. Right, just to remind yourself that that's what's there. And so then instead of looking at this as 1, we can look at this as 10. And so now we're asking ourselves, how many groups of 4 can we pull out of 10? Or what's 10 divided by 4? Well, that doesn't come out perfectly, but we do recognize that we can get 2 groups of 4 out of 10. If it doesn't give us 10, though, 2 groups of 4 would give us 8. 2 times 4 is 8 meaning we're still left with two that we haven't accounted for. And so what we have to do then is instead of stopping here like we got to on the last example, we need to bring in another zero in the hundredth spot. And we need to go ahead and drop that down so that now we can look at this as 20. And we're asking ourselves how many groups of four can go into 20? Well, five groups of four can come out of 20. 20 divided by 4 is 5, so we put a 5 up here. And that time it does come out perfectly because 5 times 4, like we just said, is 20. So now that we have nothing left, we're actually done and we have found our decimal, meaning it looks like 1 fourth converts to 0 0.25.
Another scenario that you could have is something called a repeating decimal. So for example, let's say we have the fraction one-third here. If we want to change that to a decimal, same as what we've been doing, we just need to do long division with this. So we'd set up that long division, showing that we're taking one divided by three. And just like the other examples, we can't actually start off with what we see here because we'd be trying to pull groups of three out of one, and we can't do that. So we add in our decimal point, put that up above, and now we're asking ourselves, how many groups of three can we pull out of 10? How many, or what is 10 divided by three? Well, it doesn't come out perfectly, but we can pull three groups of three out of 10, meaning three times three is nine. And so then we'd still have one left over. And since we have something left over, that means we need to bring in another zero to the hundredth spot and drop that down. But what you'll notice then is that now we just have 10 again. So I mean, I can do that again, but we already know how many groups of three we can pull out of 10. It's three groups, right? And then again, that only accounts for nine. So you've got one left over. So you bring in another zero, you have 10 again, you get another three, right? So on and so forth. We just keep going and we continue to get threes. So rather than spend the rest of our lives just forever writing threes, what we can do is we can write this decimal and we simply put a line over the three. Anytime you see a decimal where there is a line over the number, that means that number is repeating forever. So we don't have to write a bunch of threes, we can just write a single three and put a line over it like this and that tells anyone looking at it that the three is going off into infinity. Something else you could have is what we call an improper fraction, which is where the numerator is greater than your denominator. For example, we have a fraction here of 16 over 11, and certainly I think we can all agree that 16 is greater than 11. So unlike all the other examples, our numerator is the greater of the two numbers. That does not change our ability to be able to convert this fraction into a decimal. We're still looking at this as a division problem because that's what a fraction bar represents. So if we're doing 16 divided by 11, we can still set up a division problem for that. The difference is now the greater number is actually inside the box. So I'm not gonna have to add in zeros yet to be able to answer this question because the first thing we'd be looking for here is how many groups of 11 we can take out of 16. Well, that's actually a question we can answer. It's one, right? We can pull a group of 11 out of 16. So then when we subtract that out, we'd have five left over. So it's unfortunate that that didn't come out perfectly, but I think we all expected that because, you know, 16 is not going to divide by 11 perfectly. So now is the time for us to bring in that decimal point and start tacking on zeros. Well, that means now instead of five, we're looking at this as 50. So now we can find a number of groups of 11 that we can get out of 50. Well, it's not quite five because 11 times five would be 55, which would be a little bit too far. So instead, we can only pull four groups of 11 out, four times 11 being 44. So we say, okay, that doesn't match up perfectly, so we have to figure out how much is left over. 50 minus 44 is 6. And so if we've got 6 left over, since 6 does not divide by 11 perfectly, we need to bring in a 0 from the hundredths place and drop that down, meaning now we can look at this as 60. And so then we ask ourselves, how many groups of 11 can we get out of 60? Well, we can't pull six groups out because that'd be 66, so it must be five groups that we can pull out. Five times 11 would be 55, so when we subtract that, we see 60 minus 55 leaves us with five left over. And now that's important to notice because if I bring in another zero and drop it down, I'm back to 50, which we already did right up here. So I can continue going, but we know I can pull four groups of 11 out of 50, and then we're gonna get 44, subtract that, we'll get six left over, right? And then there'll be five groups, and it's just gonna keep going on and on and on. 
So it turns out this is another example of a repeating decimal, just like the one-third. The difference is with one-third, it was only a single number repeating, and with this problem, we actually have a pattern. We have both the four and the five alternating between each other. But that's okay, we can still write this as an answer. It's actually pretty simple. We just write the one point both four and five, and then we put a line over both of them, showing it's not one number that repeats, it's the pattern of four, five that keeps on going, four, five, four, five, four, five. That still would imply to anyone that we have numbers going off forever towards infinity, and that would be our converted decimal. Thank you for watching the video. We had an amazing teacher make this video for us, and they did a great job. If you like the video and want to support me in making more videos, please subscribe and watch our other YouTube videos. You can also support me by going to magemath.com and purchasing the MageMath video game. It is a really fun game that combines math and fantasy adventure into one awesome video game. We also have lots of free content on the website like math escape rooms and worksheets, so check it out!